My name is Brent Renault. this is my brother Craig, and we produced the Columbia DuPont winning entry, Surviving the Earthquake, for the New York Times. Early in their career, for many, many years, it was just him and Craig, you know? There was no, there were no wands out going with him, you know, like there were no Stephen Bailey's. It was him and Craig digging it out, trying to build this little company of two people. Brent was quiet. Brent was compassionate. Brent was caring. And Brent was one of the hardest working people in this business. And he made some of the best films uh, this country's seen in the last two decades. Most of the murders that happen in the city of Chicago are usually kids between the ages of 12 and 18 years old that have special needs. Get out my face, boy. I think the most important thing that he would say right now is, hey, everyone, thank you. Um, that's enough. And please uh, turn the camera lens back on the people I was focusing on. And to be a loving, caring mother, you have to make sacrifices for your son. All right? Gotta put him first. It's like as if he could set aside his ego to such a great extent that people wouldn't even notice him because it's like he's not attract, like it's not about him at all. Like he just was not attracting any sort of energy where he's, you know, pulling attention to himself or in any way, shape or form. When you're in a war zone or there's bullets flying over your head, um, you really, it really hits home like, I can die. Even in those situations, Brent was really able to put himself and his ego aside and be present with it present within the moment present with the people that we were speaking to and create the space for them to to tell their story you know here's a guy who was a neiman fellow at harvard you know got a degree at smu i guess and went to ivy league school in columbia got another degree i'm a very educated guy coming from the little state of arkansas and the thing i think that got him great access when he was interviewing people is because he was from arkansas you know because he he was smart and educated, but he also had that Southern sensibility about it. There was something really interesting about Brent that despite him being this guy from Arkansas, he could blend in anywhere. It was almost as if he had this invisibility cloak and I really did see it happen many times where, yeah, we're at a checkpoint or we're trying to get somewhere where, we, where we're being denied access and we're like strategizing, you know, what should we do, blah, blah, blah. And then you eventually realize like, where's Brent? And you like look across and he's just over there working. And it's like, how the heck did he get over there? And how does no one even recognize, like no one even knows. It's just like he can walk into a crowd and just dissipate into like nothing somehow. You know, he, he was, you know, he was quiet. He kind of just, things didn't bother him. He didn't freak out. He kept his cool. And, you know, with that very slight, slight Southern draw, it wasn't very much, but you could just barely hear it, you know, a little bit about it. You know, people would, you know, listen to him. 